Yo, 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 yo. Welcome back to another episode of the 8 Morning 92 Podcast, where we always keep it 100. You heard none of them sound effects, did you? Nah. Hey. Oh, then how you coming, Glock? Pause. Okay. It's the 8 Morning 92 Podcast. Are you, you know how we do. We always yeah, keep it 100. Who, who, who? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yo, 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 what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the 8 Morning 92 Podcast, where we always keep it 100. I am your host, Harrison, and this is the OVO Hedwig himself. Man, go ahead and say what's up to everybody. Go ahead, what's up? No, no, no? Give a flap to him. Give a flap to him, huh? Hey, 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 hey. So you know what it is. Like I said, um, don't matter what's going to change. Calm, calm down, calm down, calm down, calm down. Don't matter what's going on in the world. You know what I'm saying? We still going to rep the OVO gang. I appreciate Drizzy and them boys for sending out the owl to OVO Hooch and everybody at the 8 More Than 92 podcast. So you know our allegiance is live. So I don't give a fuck what that man did. But y'all seen, I did have to give a little bit of support to Kendrick. Thank you to that man for that opening song. His newest track. That just came out of here is going to be a summer banger. I hear it's a hit. It's for the ladies. So, uh, Kendrick, appreciate you. You just dropped another banger. It seems like you are just consistent. But uh, we're going to get into that, man. No no need to rush into that because we got a good show packed up for today. It ain't going to be that too many because we're just going to talk about what y'all care about to hear about. And that's what's going on the ongoing hip-hop beef. You know, quick tidbit before we get to that. Um, Yeah, your boy wasn't really nothing too much to take off other than work being busy and a little bit of traveling just to kind of not to align just kept me from aligning with um my recording days and editing days and just happened to be when i record i sometimes don't edit on the same days and it was kind of messing me up with um how i wanted to do it plus i'm at a new place at work so i could not I was trying to adjust to the schedule and stuff like that. I also went to Nashville for the draft. Shout out to the boys, J.C. Latham. Shout out to the boys, Trevon Day Sweat. Shout out to Tennessee Titans for getting me pre-access for the draft party. Got to go to the locker room. Um, as y'all can see in the pictures there, um, I enjoyed my time. Um, went through the stadium, got to go through the locker room. Something I never thought I would be able to do, you know, since my time of professional has passed other than me playing Madden. So I really did enjoy myself. Got to kick it with my brothers. Um, so yeah, I really enjoyed myself. Shout out to Darius, shout out to Carlos, shout out to Noah, shout out to Jayla, shout out to Octavius, the Bears pick who had a cleanup of a draft. But um, also I want to say before we get into it, thank you to everybody. While I was gone, I was going to try to make an episode to thank you uh, since it's been a couple weeks. Um, we were at like 2,000, 3,000 last time um that i was no we were four thousand, i think but we are at twelve thousand thirteen thousand uh youtube subscribers and i want to thank everybody for helping me get that to that plateau again ten thousand is a is a monument itself and so that means we're just continuing to get to the goal um i want to get that plaque of a hundred thousand subscribers i want that youtube plaque i will probably tattoo that motherfucker on my on my body somewhere but i'm definitely gonna have a plaque in every episode i won't even lie to you guys but thank you so much to everybody that's continue continue to support me at the 8 morning 92 podcast from everybody from the from when it was with me and banks to me and naji to me naji antonio to me antonio to me naji tonio and kendall to all the plethora of guests that we had on there i appreciate everybody but um let's keep it a buck Y'all don't give a fuck about none of that. Y'all came here to figure out what my reaction is going to be because Kendrick dropped some songs. I mean, let's let's get the let's get the honest bias out. You know, I'm not going to be one of those type of people that come on here and just sit there and say that um, Kendrick is doing all right and Drake is doing everything at the supreme level. No, um, I originally wanted to come and post pause. I originally wanted to post the episode when Drake did Taylor Made, but I, like I said, I was out of town and. I was going to post, I think I did push up, the push up episode. And then he did Taylor May and I was going to post again. But also I didn't want to oversaturate episodes, episodes with just talking about Kendrick or Drake just in general. I was like, man, I kind of wanted to talk about it at the end because at that point the show becomes a reaction piece like academics or people like that who do just reactions two people shit joe budden podcast to an extent of just reacting on 
those two people like yes the show did take off when j cole did apologize and when kendrick dropped that like that verse and when drake did his response i appreciate those brothers ultimately Fuck all y'all in comparison to Aubrey. Definitely appreciate Drake, OVO, and all that because that's what really surged it through the map. But I didn't want this to be a specific artist platform because ultimately we talk about, I talk about other stuff all the time. But right now, I mean, the most important thing right now is a rap beep and I'm heavily invested in that. So if I can't sit here and lie to you and act like I'm giving my time to other shit, not really. I mean, if y'all want to hear my time playing pickup basketball, then you should probably just text my phone. But let's get to it. Um, in the t- between the time that's come out, let's see these tracks have dropped. Taylor made Euphoria, six sixteen in L.A. Family Matters, Meet the Grams, and now Not Like Us. And out of all those songs, we're gonna start with Kendrick first. Drake called out Kendrick and Taylor made. I think that, and I'm gonna speak on Drake's part. Drake called him out until, uh, later, so I'm going to speak on all Drake's at once. And I'm going to speak on all Kendrick. Kendrick got the nod and was hitting the, hearing the call. I don't know how he was hearing it, but he was hearing he wasn't dropping those songs. I think about 17 days went by before Kendrick had a response. And in that response, he dropped Euphoria. My honest opinion on Euphoria, garbage. Not trying to be, not trying to be um, like no Kendrick hater or nothing. I'm just going to be honest with you. It has some bars in it. And this is one thing when I say about the song by Euphoria, we're in a battle rapping type atmosphere. I watch battle rapper. My favorite battle rapper is Hitman Hollow. I will not lie to you. And it's also Sue Surf. It is also Charlie Clips. It is also Conceited. It is also um, Chess. It is also, I was about to say Enes. It is also Loaded Lux. It is I watch battle rap for like that type shit. You know what I'm saying? I who who was another one that I watched that is just I, volatile. Um um Tay Rock. Uh yeah, like I said, I I like um Gichi Gotti. I like uh T Rex. Like I said, I'm as you can see, I'm I'm clearly know what I'm talking about. So I like the battle rap culture. So I'm saying this to say that when you're in a battle rap, it's not always about, yes, it's about lyrics. Yes, you can be, uh, oh, a verb. And he's a perfect example. Verb doesn't get the credit for being as good as verb is because verb is too witty sometimes for the people in the audience. They not there. You're not talking to philosophers and scholars all the time that want to hear triple, quadruple, uh, centuplet and tundras. You're dealing with motherfuckers that want to hear with, uh, jalapeno pep uh, jalapeno pepper i'll pop your ass on the fucking wall like sue sir said about uh hitman holla you don't you and i say that to say with kendrick and euphoria you gave me six minutes of boring ass trash i mean the first minute was okay but you came out there trying to be wittier than thou and it was a trend on there that i noticed from the first one uh you were going at fatherhood you were going at identity crisis you was going at um manhood you were also recycling a lot of stuff that came out already because as i said in the last episode drake when he put out push-ups he was going at a lot of people that were already attacking him so you use the pusher t reference you use the rick ross reference you bit a lot of people in my opinion that made euphoria seem kind of shitty um and also i already knew you could rap but do you make something i'm going to want to repeat i said this about j cole and i said this about kendrick which makes why drake is a superior artist these niggas do not put out albums with replayability yes they could be great songs yes it could be like let's say like this right a great movie is when they see us about the exonerated five you it's a great movie but you only gonna watch it one time uh what's another movie that is people say fruitville station you only gonna watch it one time and those are with traumatic reasons to it but what i mean by if you were to ever ask people about it they're not gonna say nothing bad about it um i didn't care for the pimple butterfly i didn't care for the big steppers and stunkle album but i care i like mass city good kid mass city and i like damn those have replayability to me uh j cole didn't care about 
if you're listening whatever he said uh for your for your ears only i didn't care about that kod's but i like forest hill drive i like born center i like sideline story and i like friday night lights up and then right after born friday no forest hill drive then you started to kind of feel yourself also pause also you wanted to play basketball you really weren't even in it no more so your shit wasn't even replayable we just knew you could rap i'm not giving motherfuckers credit for doing something i know they can because big crit can rap big sean can rap wale can rap talib quali can rap most deaf can rap we know these motherfuckers can rap but i don't feel like sitting there acting like i'm moesha listening to ohaji and undales give a spoken word talking about red light red light green light green light go 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 to my love until you can't go no more and please stop if I'm offending you ain't nobody got time for that shit I'm not trying to get too deep into shit I'm not trying to crash my car listening to you as I'm as I'm hearing your music because I'm trying to hear the words and see if I decipher right I don't like listening to songs 45,000 times to get all the words and shit in the song it has nothing to do with my intelligence it has something to do with I'm trying to listen to the song I'm trying to vibe I'm trying to chill that's what that's why I'm replaying songs because I like let's say I'm listening to Air Force Ones by Jeezy. I've been listening to that album a lot this year, but I went from old school Chevys to drop top Porsche. Couldn't walk a mile all up in my Air Forces. Come on now. Like, I'm not, that ain't nothing extravagant in that. It's, I'm replaying that to say that same thing. Everybody already know Jeezy a real street nigga. That's what I'm listening to that for. And when it's over, everybody already know Jeezy a real street nigga. I'm playing that bitch one more time. That's what I'm listening to that shit for. I'm not listening to Pimp a Butterfly to figure out how you uh, use transition to signify your aunt going to your uncle to transition to come into a new life, to transition to her becoming the man of the house, to transition to how yo are you moving to Brooklyn because you transitioned your hand to the other side of your wife's face. I'm not trying to hear all that. You transition your dick in somebody else and then you transition to be an adulterer. I'm not trying to do all that when I'm listening to your music, my dog. It's the reason why I seen this today that somebody said that Kendrick makes music for niggas that walk. You sure do, because you got nothing but time to listen to that. But for the niggas that got gas and cars and vehicles, we're not about to do all that. So um, with that being said, that's what Euphoria was. Was a good track from the standpoint. I'm not gonna sit there and grade him on some poo-poo ass ym cmb shitty boy or jp uh those type motherfuckers who really ain't doing nothing for the musical culture other than being trendy for their age frame kendrick is an assassinal assassin and a lyrical genius i'm not gonna sit there and deny it but i think he's one of them niggas like you see in um like the episode of Smart Girl play, shows with geniuses, where they're too smart for their own good and try to be too witty. The reason why I like The Office is because The Office was a mockumentary, but the smart people like Jim were smart and got it. But it wasn't for people to, it wasn't for people, it wasn't like Seinfeld where you had to feel like you had to be a genius to watch the show. It was for people that thought out the box and thought for things that was a different way of looking at com- comedy. But I didn't have to sit there like, uh, uh, not Seinfeld, Frasier. It wasn't like Frasier where I feel like I needed to have a degree to watch anything that was on Frasier. So sorry for that. Not Seinfeld, but Frasier. So, um, you know, he had that and then he released 616 in L.A. I like that one. I will replay that one. But the thing, like it's, it's been known, is Kendrick doesn't um make songs with replayability. This one was one. So Euphoria wasn't going to get played. It was just too long, bro. Like, I'm not listening to that shit for six minutes. Like, you didn't really start chopping that nigga up until the last five minutes. Like, I mean, the last minute of five, minute five of six. Like, come on, bro. Like, you have some funny stuff in there. It's cool, cool, cool. But the running thing was a lot of recycled words that niggas was already going at. You too good to be that lazy. Be original. I don't give a fuck if you just taking it and making it sound better. Make it sound like you was the first one to say it. Don't come out there and talk about Drake's um his his nose or bbls because you come out here and you hear fat ass go white boy white boy real the real niggas the real niggas is ordering lemon pepper come on now like please ross is out there looking like um one of those fat people in cartoons when they take the skin suits off and then hang it up neck all like 
head all big, body all like dehydrated and shit like that. Get that boy some water. Um, at six sixteen though, thought that was real good, but my issue with it was that it was um still aimed at the same thing. Now we talking about parenthood. Now we talking about oh, the one thing he said in you for don't tell no lies about me, and I won't tell no truths about you. That's going to be important because you got caught lying, but. Um, and then you dropped your third track, which was Meet the Grams. Um, I'ma just say that was some ass because I feel like you took the battle to the far, far left. And at this point, not only did you talk about Drake's parenting, which you had already been doing, you already said stuff about his uh his family and his upbringing, his identity crisis. He don't want to be black. Uh, you also start accused him of being a pedophile and a sex trafficker. Again, we're talking about battle rap, and I'm not going to sit there and say that it is unfair because I can't sit there and say that Ford, I mean, Pusha T went too far with Drake when he said what he had to say about 40, but I can understand when Drake didn't want to rap no more, you can whoop his ass. To me, I feel like Kendrick, for all y'all Kendrick fans, you out there snitching. Um, If you out there knowing something and you, ain't, and you out there waiting for a battle to sit there and tell what a motherfucker doing with their crimes, the same way motherfuckers wasn't telling on R. Kelly or Bill Cosby and all that type shit, y'all was condoning it. You was condoning it up into the uh, part of it benefited you in this battle to in relay that information. But you don't care about them same girls that you telling people to protect themselves from because why didn't you get this man off the streets, Mister Mister Morales, huh, Mister Big Stepper? You know why? Because a nigga with a size seven shoe can't be taken serious like that, nigga. The fuck out of here, nigga. You so fucking you so hot, um, oral, moral, oral in this motherfucker. It was so cool to sit there and admit a nigga a pedophile, and so cool to do this. That if you were such a, a goddamn uh Justice League member, nigga, you would have got this nigga off the streets a long fucking time ago instead of using it for streams. Because I mean, at this point, this is the most we've ever heard your voice. You got the highest attention in the world right now, and that's because you are battling the best in the industry, the best. Let's not get that shit confused. You are battling the best. You are the top three in it, but you are number three. And that's day three. Nigga, you know you and Cole got removed for Big Sean and Wale. But we're not about to go back on that, right? So you sit there and you do that with Meet the Grams and take it far left. Uh, to me, I felt like that was uncomfortable for me. I'm not going to sit there and tell people what they can and can't do. Um, he talked about your wife about you hitting her. So, you know, to you, that could be too far. But at the same time, you dropped this song five minutes after was like 10 minutes after he dropped his song. So don't act like you had uh, a long time to sit there and stew before you came with it. Now, as far as where I put Meet the Grams, nowhere near a better song than um, Family Matters. But also, it is up there with one of the most disrespectful diss tracks out there. And I'll say for the current time, I would give it Hail Mary. I'm not going to give it, like, hit them up because um kendrick will probably like hit him up because he like hitting people bigger than him with breast uh but um why'd you never try to man in a house like that did stunkle teach you that i don't know but you was raised by a woman so that probably why you was taught to hit women but anyways um so uh i would say hail mary with jay's uh with eminem 50 cent and i can't remember the third person that was on Hail Mary, but uh, hit a, Hail Mary going to Ja Rule. So um, I'll probably say it's up there. It's very, very disrespectful um, to me. If you ask me at that point, Kendrick seemed rattled to get information out about him and to say something to him because he knew Drake was going to talk about his family. And to me, like I said, I'll get to the Drake part now that um, after this, that Drake, I think he baited him to get the information he wanted from him. And on top of that, I just think that at this point, Kendrick looked like he was spiraling because this was supposed to be y'all take the high road ass nigga. This was supposed to be y'all always turn the other cheek like Mal uh, Martin Luther King. This was supposed to be the the voice of the people, the the lyrical guy, the the one I don't want to be famous. I don't I wouldn't want to be famous too if I had the charge you had against you. But um 
you just wanted to go out there and seem like you were just so holier than now. Then you come out with this album, I guess, jump in front of a story before you, before it jumps in front of you, trying to make it seem like I have flaws too, but you wanted to sit there and say, well, you can rap calm on a beat. You could do this without having to go there. But then you heard when the niggas about to drape, uh, jump on your the track talking about your wife. Now you hate the nigga. Now you want him dead. What you said this in Euphoria too. Now you telling criminal information, pedophiles, uh, predators, uh, Harvey Weinstein writing letters to your parents talking about put his head in a box. Nigga, we need to see you. We need we need to see you about that. Show us you chopping the motherfucker head off because you was a big stepper. You was Mister. Come on. Show us that you bought this life that you talking. Other than that, pip squeak pipe down. I'm not trying to hear that shit. But let's get to the track that did, in my opinion, because of in totality, you are leading the cards right now. Uh, not like us. Dre uh Kendrick <clears throat> did something for the streets. All right, he hopped on a track with DJ Mustard for not like not like us. And um it's a banger. I will give him that. It is. He did exactly. He did the Bla Drake playbook. He made a song with replayability. He made a song that's catchy. He made a song that's, that you could play in the club. And some standout lines in it is he used the slave line that Drake said in Family Matters to turn it to how Drake um, uses black people in Atlanta to get where he is. He named Thug. He named Future. He named Two Chains and all that. He used that type of play. He uh, he changed up a funny line uh, to some people. Uh, OVO, OVO. He also said um, something about the line when it says if he if he messing if he strike a chord with him, it's probably a minor to drag onto the play for. Um, him messing with minors and him, you know, basically grooming young girls. Um, it was good. It was clever. It was smart. He really didn't say shit in there, but he took the opportunity to keep applying the pressure on Drake because Meet the Grams came out, like I said, 10 minutes after Family Matters. And I have my own take on that, but it did come out enough time to basically halt whatever that man wanted to do and to at least halt the momentum on it. After it seemed out, it didn't seem like it did that much except maybe start the pedophile talk to add to it on the um on the not like us record but also with the mustard joint on it seemed like he unified california and got him talking now my personal take on it california finally got something to say all right cali cali i appreciate y'all we really do um i fuck with california y'all niggas ain't had nothing big the big this is the biggest song that y'all had since the dougie since Cat Daddy and since Sweetie put out my type. All right. Um, this is the biggest movement to come through there since they filmed Coach Carter with Samuel L. Jackson. All right. Uh, yeah, I don't see. I see why y'all happy right there. Uh, and I can understand what it is. Um, but and this is finally. And it's a dark skinned nigga that made the song. So niggas feel cool about dancing. Um, Kendrick put out a song for all the gangsters to pop their coochies to, for them to go out there and start dancing, do all this. Because behind closed doors, what the niggas don't want to tell you is they was out there doing a the tootsie slide, trying to act like it was funny, playing in the round, doing their spare time. It's like, ah, niggas doing the right slip slide. But y'all, y'all niggas was dancing to the tootsie slide. But now Kendrick got out some, got a dance out there now for y'all to pop y'all pussies to. And now y'all feeling like y'all big and bad and feeling like y'all got it like that. Like, I mean, it's 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 so sad right now how y'all niggas is getting down. It shows how much disdain that y'all niggas have for Drake because he was just great. And yo nigga, see, this is what it was. Drake was supposed to be, Kendrick was supposed to be what Drake was. But um, it wasn't in the cards. You know, uh, Kendrick was supposed to revive the West Coast. Kendrick was supposed to put, you know it on the map he was so conscious the president pick him as the top person if he had to pick between him and drake he got the pulser he sell records he got grammys he do all this yet who the fuck goes out their way to pick kendrick on a track you know he was always second or third for when it came to number one shit he was never the number one artist he was never that he don't put out enough records he don't do whatever he was never number one but you know what it was his light skin motherfucker from Canada. And what happened was the light skinned motherfucker not only came down here and took over the rap game, because what did he do? He was an actor first. And then when he became an actor, he put out a mixtape. And then that mixtape number one. 
And then people thought he was soft. And then he got in some battles with people and then he won those battles. And then he jumped on tracks. And then what happened with the tracks? He body all the tracks and make all your tracks number one. So then he's the hottest, hottest artist out since Wayne. And then what happens for that? Then this corny looking dweeb person somehow happens to get all y'all girls. So now any girl that been out there won't Drizzy and all this. Now all they captions is a Drake song caption. So he has number one. He has he has uh so now at this point he can't take no deflection. So then Pusha T comes around and he reveals the only chink in his armor. Cause at this point, Meek Mill's the guy. Meek Mill's a gangster, Meek Mill's an MMG, Meek Mill's going up. And then hold on, wait a minute. This nigga started tweeting. And then he became the the nigga that boss bitches was wifing. And then you couldn't take him down. And then he seemed invincible. So then at that point, he owned more songs. Then the nigga grew his beard out. Then the nigga got hits after hits after hits. Even on his trashy shit is number one. Then y'all, like I said, Pusha T comes around. He gives Drake his first loss with the son of Adidon. Fucks up a bunch of shit. All the wins Drake takes, it's supposed to be gone. His reign's supposed to be over. It's a new number one, like Pat, 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 Pat Beverly said. But hold on one second. Where the fuck is Pusha T at with them dry ass motherfucking braids, huh? No fucking wear, nigga. You know why? Because Aubrey still got that. So Aubrey not only held on between 2009, 2019, we're in 2024, and it's the number one rapper in the game right now. Not only, let me tell you how this is the number one rapper in the game. Kendrick ain't had this much spotlight in his motherfucking life. Not since Poetic Fucking Justice, all right? When he had that album, uh, Big Steppers, the Stunkle album, that shit lasted for about a week and a half, two albums. That shit got panned. The same shit with J. Cole album. This nigga had the biggest fucking album of this year on the biggest record of the album. Shout out to Metro. Talking about Drake. His biggest attention that he seeked all this time, letting people know how good he is, is talking about Drake. If he yells anything, we won't know him about none of the other shit he did because you probably can't find 17 regular ass niggas to tell you their favorite Kendrick song that ain't on a song from that was on the radio and he'll be known for battling Drake. And when this shit is over, y'all hoping Drake don't go back to the top. But it ain't happened yet. So that's what y'all really mad for. A Toronto Canadian came down there and killed y'all shit. I understand, bro. Get the fuck over it. Like I said, let me see if I can find it. Let me just see how sad it is, bro. Let me see. And I would play the song. I mean, y'all know the song by now. I mean, it's it, it's streaming everywhere. Look at this. Grown ass niggas couldn't wait. All the gangsters couldn't wait to pop their pussies. I'm just saying, look, look, look at it. Jig that shit, boy. Come on now. Shake that ass for Kendrick. Now shake that ass for C's. Come on now. Come on, man. Look at this shit. I ain't never seen. This, these are niggas that was behind closed doors doing a tussie slide because ain't nobody ever got that much rhythm talking about it's some gangster shit, nigga. You got to be flexible like a motherfucker to do this type shit. So these are the same niggas that could do the stanky leg. This the jerk. This the shit that you see. These niggas is shaking their ass for Drake and hands on their knees. All right. So let, let these soft booty ass niggas get y'all confused. All right. These niggas is twisting, tip top and tussie sliding uh one, two step. All right. So fuck out of here, bro. Like I said, um, Kendrick, you up on the cards right now. I respect what you did this move. Um, it's no, it's no hate on, this is a battle. It's no hate what you're doing. You know, it's a strategy. I don't know if Drake anticipated that or not. Um, at least for the last track, but this last one, I give you, four three overall i'm saying it's go to 12 rounds because we in a heavyweight fight uh i don't think that euphoria was better than family i don't think i don't think euphoria was better than family matters at all i don't think none of the songs you put out was better than family matters and i don't even think this song that you just put out was better than family matters in the battle of it but your meet the grams from a battle standpoint was it's not better but it gives you the points so we're going for point standards you know you came out with three You'll get it because you start off with like that. That's the first punch. Then Drake came back and killed your ass with push-ups. I personally like um, Taylor Made, And then he hit you with uh, Family Matters. So from the most standpoint, it's like four songs or three. But also the way you put it, we can put it up on the store scorecards by that. But I got it close. I think people are trying to push it more than what it is. But lyrically, this last one he went through. Fuck that nigga. I gave you credit. Eat a dick, nigga. Y'all niggas stop uh crunching y'all cookies because i mean cr uh, popping y'all coochies because y'all not like that either all right so um 
now get to the man that we need to hear. Uh, slightly don't mean that motherfucker win. It's 12 rounds, all right? Ali had to face George Foreman for the second time, and you saw how that motherfucker went, all right? So don't ever play the boy, all right? Ow, hey, 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 calm down. You know what I'm saying? Y'all see the owl here. And let's get this shit straight and clear, all right? Drake, Aubrey, motherfucking Graham is nothing to motherfucking play with. I see what you did, Kendrick. I see what you did. Cool mood, nice and good. Dropped your little song out there. I got my theory on that. I'm going to say that right then. But let's catch it up real quick so I can get my little take, and then we're going to bounce up out of here. Came out with push-ups, went up 20 people. Uh, came out with Taylor May. I thought that shit was genius. I thought that shit was dope as fuck. And then I also thought that the Tupac writing the AI verse because everybody want to see if his first song was AI, and then talking to you as your idols was real cool. And then Kendrick pushed up and put out uh cease had tupac's man put out cease and desist because he got his feelings hurt all right cool that's what it is but you also notice euphoria didn't come out till after taylor swift came out like he told you took 17 days dropped your tracks and then drake did something i thought was really weird and i'm saying this for this reason for that whole day that family matters came out he told everything that was gonna happen um then family matters comes out and a couple minutes afterwards like literally a couple minutes afterwards kendrick drops meet the grams and what people didn't notice and you got to watch the video i personally think drake set this up because when he put out the la 616 in la he had a glove on there and everybody wanted to do everything in a mama 616 oj 616 is a date for canadian father's day 616 is the time when yogi the bear pissed in the series finale like it was just extra as fuck and it was actually a picture taken from apparently stolen luggage and drake's love and from drake's father so it kind of made me weird how did kendrick get a picture of this and if you hear meet the grams meet the grams was basically saying drake had an 11 year old daughter and drake was still a bad parent things that kendrick had already said over two tracks already so obviously he don't seem to ha he got his own daddy issues um i can understand that you want to talk to somebody about raising their kids kendrick while you raise somebody else's kid i understand um and then um after that he talked about the, like I said, 11 year old daughter that Drake had. And then that's when he went out there with the sex trafficking shit and all that. Um, Drake came out there shooting. And this is one thing that I want people to kind of notice. Family Matter was an amazing track. The rollout for it was amazing for it. And I think that Drake, me personally, sacrificed his rollout so he can get Kendrick to drop that track so he can catch get Kendrick caught lying. And the only thing I don't like about this battle is we've noticed that Kendrick ain't said shit about that daughter shit, but he wants to file on this ride on this pedo. Uh, or sex trafficking shit so he could kind of take the attention away from it stand on your shit man um we we're talking about you said don't tell no lies about me and i won't tell no truths about you well where's the daughter at we don't know what the daughter is you know what i'm saying um we you where the truth at? you had the the bag it wasn't his bag uh if you look at the picture on kendrick's disc it was originally up there if y'all notice it's been taken down uh it was the Ozempic weight loss pills that he said about Ross in the song. Now, how could he have those same pills a couple of minutes after Drake just said it? Hmm. Then the t-shirt that he had was from the short collection and it was a fat nigga with a size two XL. The pharmacy was from California, meaning it was over there by you. And the pills were for Aubrey, but they were pills used for Rick Ross. So you got duped. You got false information. You was running around talking about this mole shit, which Drake clearly knew. He also went to the same uh, restaurant that you said in, in your song. I want to say it's Euphoria. Um, no, it was, I think it was in 616 in L.A. that he got robbed at. And in this song that Drake put out, we learned that Kendrick is beating the fuck out his wife hmm as my son jarvis does hmm you what you putting hands on on her like the funniest thing that he said but the realest kendrick was it self-defense because she bigger than you come on now kenny kenny you put your hands on that girl man come on um he did a lot of clever things the 11 year old girl that he was talking about and they were going to post pictures of drake had the poster in there so to me i think he baited him in so he could put out and see what that nuclear revelation he was going to put out about him and it had to be about the pedophile shit so i'm thinking he's going to sit back and whatever he's going to do he's going to cook up his master plan i think drake is ready for it i'm not going to spend as much time on it because kendrick is in the lead and this is going to be the most you'll get out of me of a concession of this round 
But um, don't get this shit fucking confused, nigga. Y'all know what the fuck it is. Aubrey came back. And I'm, I want to address this point. Family Matters was a fucking diamond of a diss track. All right? I don't give a fuck what nobody says. And Kendrick is getting the benefit of the doubt because, one, nobody ever hears from Kendrick. And also, Kendrick is talking to just Drake. Family, mem- Family Matters, he talked about so many people. Uh, Metro, you mad about a girl. ASAP Rocky. If you was hitting Drake, baby mama, who was he hitting at that time? Hmm. Make sure your kids look like you or Rihanna and not Aubrey. Uh, the weekend, he said that your music is most played in Atlanta around Pride. Rick Ross, you taking fat pills that make you jealous of niggas. Metro, you the reason why him and Future ain't beef, ain't, ain't cool right now because you a hoe. In between that time, um, Drake said uh the funny line, another funny line. Kendrick said something. Uh Kendrick just opened his mouth. Let's get a nigga a Grammy now. Um, he showed you he was talking about Pharrell. You want to push a P? How about you push a T? Okay, well, he got the jury for that nigga. He got the letters from Tupac family, all them talking about a cease and desist. Remember, don't tell no truths about me. Or don't tell no lies about me, and I won't tell no truths about you. Where was the cease and desist at for from Drake for that? He also talked about Kanye and Kim. Um he went at so many people and addressed it. The song was 737. I want to say the same um, size of his plane. But um, not only did he do that, he killed everybody in one foul swift swoop. Now, he responded to Kendrick's claim about the 11-year-old daughter so much fast that I don't think he was out celebrating. So I think he knew about this was going to happen. I think he knew because Kendrick couldn't have uploaded that video. Trust me, coming from a nigga who's going to upload this video, it's not going to be done in 10 minutes. Uh, but I will say that um, it was strategically done. It was smart. I think he baited him. I don't think he counted for not like that or not like us. But that's fine because I think he wants to see what the world is going to do. And if anybody's watched Batman, the uh, the Dark, not the Dark Knight, uh, Batman Return of the Dark Knight, everybody knows that the famous line, no, actually, we said in the Dark Knight, you either die a hero or live long enough to see yourself become a villain and obviously drake is a villain at this point but we all know how the story goes when you need a motherfucker y'all need a motherfucker and at the end of the day whatever y'all want to say about him y'all are riding drake's name right now for a tweet for a view for a song for a chart for a sale aubrey's running the fucking game right now let's keep it fucking real and if we want to talk about morals and everything who was the narrator for Mr. Morales and the Big Steppers. Kodak, right? You so high and mighty. Kodak is a sex offender. Kodak is a um, I don't know. I want I know he's on the register list. Um, shit. You was after Dre. Dr. Dre is known for beating the shit out of his old lady. It don't get emphasized as much, but he is definitely known for that. So obviously, you was doing the hits you was making with aftermath was obviously way more than just music you was obviously studying under that tutelage more and obviously you learn from predators because you put predators on your album so why are you acting all high and mighty now so all y'all people talking about that shit with drake hmm this man had kodak and he worked with dr dre two main people and let's go to the part about kendrick didn't do the la 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 2014 dj who uh concert kendrick lamar got arrested for assault uh involving a female look it up and it's posted it right here so as you can see right here 2014 kendrick lamar is arrested for assaulting uh, getting into a, a altercation with a female there go your proof don't tell no lies about me and i won't tell no truths about you where the daughter where the proof of the sex trafficking where the proof of um 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 what do you say the bbl where where the proof of the where's all the proof that I, i've already said it like i said i don't want to get tongue-tied up here and take these long where's the proof because we don't have some truths about you you in brooklyn right now my nigga and it ain't to go get a tattoo by black ink and he ended it wearing your old lady's ring come on big stepper Come on, big stepper. Size seven shoe on like you was trying to have a cat fight. You know what? At the end of this episode, go put the man of that house on this call. Bring him on to the episode. We want to talk to the stunkle. 
because I'm tired of talking to K Dot. You know what I'm saying? Um, I'm gonna wrap it right here. This has been a good way to end it. Uh, Family Matters is a better track, but I'm not gonna sit there and be uh, biased. Four three, Drake will come back a line. Uh, thank you everybody that's listened to it. Make sure that when you sitting there getting information about people, make sure you got the right information because the niggas is gonna sit there and dick ride. Because now Kendrick gave all the niggas something to pop their coochie suit for summer 24. This has been another episode of 8 Morning 92 Podcast where we always keep on hunting. I'm your host. Hey, do me a favor. Y'all say bye by the OVO uh, Hedwig. We're going to holler at y'all later. Peace. Yo, yo, yo. Yo, yo, yo. Welcome back to another episode of the 8 Morning 92 Podcast where we always keep on hunting. You heard none of them sound effects, did you? Nah. Hey. Oh, then how you coming, Glock? Okay. It's the 8 Morning 92 podcast. You know how we do. We always keep it 100. Yeah, yeah.